When I went to the Holy Land When I went to the Holy Land If the first commandment wasn't I am But instead it was remember all ten I don't think we'd have the same problems When I went to the Holy Land When I went to the Holy Land All right, we are live from my bedroom on location, season two, talking to those who are in the biz. Anything to do with the mass media, the media, from us to you. There's lots of gigs out there, guys. And if there's a gig out there that you would like to do, I'm trying to talk to all those folks out there that are involved in the business. I've talked to cameramen. I've talked to the musicians. I've talked to people in this business that create their own shows, that are traveling the world. And now I'm really intensely not involved with anybody in the news business, just straight up news, because news is a business. There's a 24 hour news business out there. And now making content for news is now a business. Before it was just reporting what happened and now it's intense, creative and deep delving investigative reporting. There's so many different aspects to our business. This business is something that you do because you love it, not because you think it's the best money turn. I promise you there's a thousand other ways to make some money and keep the dog away from your door. <laughs> oh, the coughing you're hearing right now is my son who's not in school, not because we're truant, but because he is not feeling very well. But it's good. It's good because every everything that's bad has a silver lining. And in this case, he can ask his own questions today here live from my bedroom on location and today I'm actually in my bedroom so I even though I'm on location the name of the show is live from my bedroom on location so I'm not on location today but the person I am talking to again not a journalist here I'm a guy who's just chit chatting trying to keep you know a conversation alive and I'm hoping you'll glean something and then when I listen it back I'll glean something because I have no short-term memory so today, I'm talking to somebody who has several different uh, avenues pertaining to media. And so I can't wait to find out what his, uh, his big ideas are and what he feels is missing from the media and what he feels he's contributing. So let's, let's bring him up here. His name is Dave Gordon. Dave, can we hear you? I can hear you. Can you hear me? There we are. And we're going through online, uh, it, the internets, so this is how you are getting his audio. So uh, thank you very much for uh, spending some time here today with me, live from my bedroom. I guess it's not on location. I keep saying on, you're on location, but you're really not on location either because it's your home. Are you talking to me from your home right now, Dave? I am. I'm talking to you from my home office. Ugh. Well, and most of the things you do get done from your home office. Do you find yourself need, in needing of travel in your business? Or can you do it mostly from the phone from your home office? The majority of the time I do my interviews and my research in my office from phone or internet. Every now and again, I have to schlep outside. Luckily, not recently. In the snow. Uh, uh, and every now and again, I'll uh, have to leave town for a day or two or three to do a report on something or do research. But most of the time, I'm here in my cozy home office with uh, with my refrigerator and my cat and all the amenities uh, that uh, you could ever want. Well, yes, especially if you have a cat. Happy cat, happy life. <clears throat> so we are a... How would you describe, are you an, a, a, a journalist? Would, how would you describe your gig? What's your gig? Journalist is fine. You could also call me media professional because I'm, I'm, I'm in various media, broadcast, online, multimedia, uh, authoring. So uh, you can pick your uh, favorite type of descriptor. Are you walking around with the computer right now? Am I walking around? Yeah, I'm asking if you're moving the, the, uh, the computer. The reason is is because I've done I've done the online interview several times, and I'm just um, I'm you've cut in and out twice now. So I just wanted to know if you're moving the the the, the computer. No, I'm actually using my phone, uh, my cell phone. I'm holding it oh a mere five inches from my oh, mouth. Oh, you're holding your phone. Okay, so so it's the um, okay. All right, so at least I understand. So. Um, 
Right, so the phone is what we're, we're dealing with. So the same way you would have a cell phone, that's the same strength of the, of the signal that we're going to have for this, uh, this conversation today. Yeah. You know what I mean? When right. You're, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's popped in. Okay, so uh, you would describe yourself as oh, in the media. And, and just to let people know how I know you or know of you, um, we were both uh, scheduled for – I'm actually not too sure what you were scheduled. I, mean, I can't speak for you. I was scheduled for an, um, an interview and a round circle chat – pertaining to uh, anything and everything to do with uh, Judaism or being a Jew and Jew as a faith and as a culture and as a people. Would, would you remember? Uh, our mutual friend, Eden Wallet, invited us to an online television show that, as it happened, uh, didn't quite work out the way that he had uh, wanted it to as he was supposed to host, but I subbed in uh, as host with you as my partner slash panelist, and we riffed about Jews and media and Hollywood and all that kind of fun stuff, and that's how we met first. Right, right, and then after, I, again, I have no short-term memory, so I had to watch it back. When I, after I watched it back, I wasn't, I wasn't sure, because we were um, having the conversation about how it only affected us. We couldn't actually speak for the whole the world of Jews or Judaism or Jewry. Mean? I couldn't. I couldn't talk to everybody. Uh, I could only speak through my own opinion, and it was weird to find a, a sturdy foundation to speak from, as things are kind of volatile uh, in the state of Israel. And I don't want to say things or, or motivate people to think crazy things in this time of of things being uh, very um, th explosive. If I can use a bad word, <laughs> but things are. Uh, Things are just a little interesting I, in, in in the city. So everyone wanted to have conversations. When I say city, I mean the, the, the Holy Land city. So uh, for me, it was very difficult to have conversations about me being personal where I live in Canada. And I don't have any stakes, uh, per, like, personal stakes in Israel, other than I, I can have... I, there's something about Israel that I have, but I don't know. It's not personal. It's not personal. Um so I found that when I was discussing with you and your cohort, um, the producer, was she the producer of the show? The lady yeah, that was setting us up? Yeah. It was her show. Uh, she, uh, I believe, is the producer, but it's it's Eden's show. It was Eden's show. Yeah. Okay, without Eden there, it just became, because he, he would be the one that would have been holding the rope, pulling you and I down the path that he he had ready for us. So instead of that path, we we chose our own road by th by thrashing at the weeds, and collect. Are you okay, buddy? Yep. Uh, thrashing at the weeds. And uh, I wasn't sure what we were discussing because some of the the knowledge or some of the facts that came out between you and I were not were not correct. <laughs> Did you ever listen back to that interview between you and I? I try not to listen to myself. Oh, yeah, I can't help myself. That's half the reason I do what I do, Dave. Um, it's so I can hear it back later. I have no short-term memory. And as again, I'm not a journalist. I'm just a guy having the chit-chat because we were having an interesting conversation, but I wouldn't remember it. And when I was trying to explain it to other people, it wouldn't come through. So I decided that this is a great medium for me to have a conversation with you post the interview that we had because that interview is available on, on the Palmcast website as a link for what we what we discussed uh, for others to listen to uh, your because you have a, a piece as well in a paper somewhere uh, you have a uh, you have articles you also write articles uh, as well as being online and, and being in front of the camera what's the name of the uh, company for which you gig out your written work uh, well my my work uh, appears in a circuit of maybe 10 places every week so Oh, I'm Target sorry. Right, really so, right. So, you, all right. So, you okay? So, you have ten. You have you have ten outlets that you that that run your run your works. There's one that's attached to your name when you and I are emailing back and forth. I assume that that right. was right. Right. So, I'm managing editor of an online news portal called LandmarkReport.com. And this and this I've 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 read. This is this I've I, I looked into not for any type of research. But I had links to you after I was. Uh, we had done that interview together, so I. I and uh, you are passionate about the land of Israel. That I am. Yes, yes. So it, it, it or most of your reportings have to do with the edge or the realm of, 
of being Jewish or do you, are you outside of being Jewish as well in your news reporting? The, the easy answer is it all depends on what's going on in Israel. Like every other journalist, there's um, hot times to report on it and other times it's quiet. But the past uh, eight, 10 months, as you know, there's been a lot of activity in Israel and a lot to talk about in Israel. Uh, but typically, my work does not involve writing about Israel. In fact, I would say four-fifths of it involves writing everything but um, uh, news, uh, arts, uh, current affairs, domestic issues, uh, politics, you, you, you name it, everything under the sun. Well, that, well, that's great. I'm actually glad to hear that. I'd hate to, that you would be limiting yourself uh, just to be speaking for a, a place of just the same size as the Lake Ontario. <laughs> I, I hope you're feeling better, Sammy. That's terrible. Did you know that when you get pink eye, it comes with a cough? Did you know that? I did not know. I, you know, I thought all Jews were doctors. I didn't. I'm not a doctor either, but I am a, a humorologist, so maybe I'm a doctor of funny. I could possibly... <laughs> Because <laughs> laughter is the best medicine, so either that or I'm a pharmacist, a drug dealer perhaps. I'm trying to think outside of the box of my own gigging. I want to make sure what you and I are doing are gleaning. So how many years of, what's your background? Like, Did you go to university? Do you have several degrees? Are you in the media? Like, Or is this a passion of yours that clearly you have a talent for and you're just keeping with? Since I was very young, I enjoyed writing. It's been a long time hobby. During uh, university, I began publishing my work and getting paid for it. And I quickly realized that I could both do what I enjoy and get paid for it. And nothing could be sweeter than that combination. So after I finished York University with a major in English and a minor in religious studies, and also I had a theater degree, I began freelance writing and slowly but surely working my way into the industry by, uh, by by working in it. I have had a number of jobs in uh, uh, four or five newsrooms since then. And uh, my work has appeared in more than 110 publications over the course of 20 years. Wow, that, that's that's something to stand by. And so you're, 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 you're clearly motivated and you love what you do, which, which is a great reason to do what one does. I always feel bad for those who are doing gigs that they clearly don't want to be doing it. That's that's its own form of slavery. That's its own form of torture. Waking up and going to yeah, a job you don't want to do. Say, yeah. As, as I always say, uh, there are really only two kinds of jobs in the world. The kind of job you look forward to going to and the kind of job you look forward to leaving. Well, see, this, one's a job and one's a career. Like, if you think you want to be there, if you get to work and your first idea is when can I go home, you're not, you're, <laughs> you're, you're not in your career. If your first thought right. is when can I get back to doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm a full-time parent and a, uh, a part-time worker. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. And you, you yourself are also someone who has, uh, has made more of ourselves. We have divided. And how many children do we have? Oh, I have three girls aged six, four, and two. That is beautiful. Wow. You have your own curling team. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they do use curling. That's for sure. Was it? Was that a hair joke? Are you making a hair joke? That was a hair joke. It was a hair joke. Curlers. Okay. Uh, I also have. Uh, I have three boys: a uh, ten-year-old, uh, a ten-year-old, a uh, seven-year-old, and a six-year-old. Oh my! Well, maybe I only have two. As long as he can last uh, through what's going on here. Oh, I hope you can feel better. And so then when I have my children, I, uh, I, I want them to learn from me. Um, I can only teach them what I know. I can only look through life. And for me, um, um, music and uh, conversation and uh, talking to people is a skill and a gift. So I've been teaching my children uh, and I've been bringing them along live from my bedroom on location to talk and to ask their questions. And so uh, Samson's here, so I'll let him ask his question. But before that, I have, unless you know, if you can remember... You know what? I won't put my I won't put my uh, my uh, second oldest or my second youngest in that position. I want to start with my my kids have questions for you. And my my oldest son, he would ask. So since you've been doing media and it's something you love to do, and you also have several outlets that run your papers, and you're before you're in front and behind the camera, 
and you seem to love what you do and you're getting paid for it, my question is, what up? <laughs> what up? That is the I question. I, I, I wish I could understand the question to provide an answer. <laughs> you wouldn't have been the first. What up is what's next? What are we up to? What is your passion? What is it, what is it you're oh, thinking of? Oh, 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 I see. I see. Um, I want to go further afield. Uh, I, I like a diverse portfolio. I like uh, expansion. And I like doing new things. If I do the same old day in, day out, I uh, begin to lose more hair uh, uh, then, then I, I have been losing. Um, so, so my my vision is to continue doing what I'm doing, uh, and that which interests me, help helping people write books, continue to write books, write articles, and have a lot more uh, work and a lot more um, improvement improvement in my skill over time and um, make uh, uh, f and fulfill myself and fulfill others. Well, that's, that, that's, a, I think that's a goal for most of us, but that, thank you for, so books is the only thing that came forward that I didn't know up until just then that you were, uh, you've gleaned, you've written tones, you've written a book uh, or many books. How many books are under your belt? <laughs> About 10. 10 books under your belt and you're also a co-author or a co-writer or a ghostwriter for others? All of the above. I have actually only written one from start to finish. It's a it's a book of um, Bible stories for young people, and I named it after my eldest daughter, Bracha. The others were uh, ghost written, edited, researched, co written, co edited. Another one is um, a tome of profiles of great Canadians called Alive and Kicking. Uh, and uh, the, the specific theme is great Canadians over the age of 75. So I got to uh, interview the CEO of the Four Seasons, the former mayor of Mississauga, Hazel, uh, Hazel McCallion, um, a noted author, Peter C. Newman, and so on. Uh, and uh, I also, it, this is the most whack. I'm not going to name them all, but the, the most whack is that I was, my help was solicited in putting together an English textbook for German students to learn about Canada. Hold on, but women from where? I will repeat. Uh, to, my help was solicited to put together a German, German. Uh, German. German. English textbook for for German kids to learn about Canada. It, yeah, it's this Skype. Uh, so the word German kept becoming man. That was the, uh, that's the problem. I can't wait to listen to this back. I wonder if it's my connection or if it's my headset. If it is, he said German. Well, that's fantastic. So we're going to move on to uh, my, my, my second oldest or my second youngest because I'm not, I'm not trying to create that kind of problem in my, in my home. And then uh, Samson, say hello. Hello. And Samson, please ask your questions. Because as I said, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And here's my apple. Please ask a question. I think we heard this already. What, what's your favorite thing to do? Again, sir? I'm sorry. I didn't hear the question. One more time, please. What's your favorite thing to do? My favorite thing to do is play with my kids. Play with his kids. That's a pretty good answer. And you, and you have you have a, you have a follow up. What's your favorite thing to eat? <laughs> you know what? I was very tempted. I was very tempted to to, to answer the last question with uh, my favorite thing to do is eating because uh, I, I I I love so many things. Uh, I could sit down to a nice big spicy shawarma. Every single day. I, oh, and also Greek salad every single day. If I had that every single day, uh, nothing else would worry me in the world. Any other questions, Sammy? 
Sammy? Oh, yeah, I have to ask Kins. Oh, what's your favorite color? What is my favorite color, you ask? Yes. Uh, you know, it used to be purple, uh, but now my kids want want purple, so I have to give it up, and uh, now i got to switch to blue. Okay. What's your favorite number? My favorite number is uh, my age. It's uh, 42 because they say it is the answer to life, universe, and everything. That's a Douglas Adams quote from a What's book. What's your favorite song? My favorite song? Uh, that's a tough one. There's so many, there are so many songs out there to choose from. Uh, but if I had to choose one right now, a song that I could listen to and make me uh, – today I would ch I would choose a different one every day. But today I would choose th that happy song from Farrell. It's just so fun. You're not wrong. Okay. Well, well thank you very much, Samson, for that. He also asked his younger brother or his uh, third oldest brother – I don't know how this works. I just don't want anyone to feel that I'm 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 being age, you know, age inappropriate to my kids. Well, thank you for that, boys. So now, where can I get those books that you were talking about? Is there you have them for sale on your website, or how do I? How do how do people get those books for which you were uttering? Uh, actually, a, a bunch of them uh, have uh, have been discontinued or sold out or out of stock. But uh, next time. Uh, Next time we talk, you can shoot me an email. I might have a bunch from uh, from. Uh, I'll see. I'll see what I can uh, dig up. I could definitely get you the one with the Bible stories. Uh, as for the others, um, I, I might have to. I might have to double check. Well, here's the thing, I, I, because my thought was is that we should do something if you know to get it into the library system. That seems to be one of the things as a Canadian writer, uh, one of the things you can step forward to get your name and have other Canadians enjoy your works. The, the library system would be very happy to support. Oh, uh, that's a fun idea. Yeah, well, I was just I just wanted to help because if you have something that you want people to share, I'm trying to help. That's all I'm doing here. This is a community service that I'm pulling off here. I am not doing this for any type of money. The whole point of this is to learn for my learning, for the sake of my kids' learning, and hopefully to... Um, I don't network very well, so I opened a network, the Palmcast Network, so it could do its own networking for me because I don't know how to be hidden to say... Uh, the, our business is kind of there, there's a lot of things that are behind the scenes there's a lot of doctor there's a lot of wizards there's a lot of uh, wizards of Oz behind the big curtain and one of the things is that everyone's promoting themselves everyone in my business is self-promotion so uh, that is the gig it's self-promotion Pr promoting myself doing what I want to do doing what I like to do and at some point hopefully to be paid not having to get it is there any other uh, like hidden talents you have other than being a dad seems like that might be a hidden talent for you I mean, three children, three girls. I have three boys. They don't know what they want to do. I just know they can destroy stuff by, by staring at it. But girls at the age of four know their whole life. They know what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, and how they're going to get it done. They're playing house. They're telling you you're going to be the daddy. This is the job you're going to do. This is how it's going to rock. Little boys just show up. And then they'll, they'll, they'll basically destroy something. So I don't have what you have. I have what I have. I have three young men and they are clearly different and when people see me walking with three boys their eyes roll back into their head knowing knowing that i clearly made a mistake and how about with you with the girls when you're walking around with three girls you are people slowing you down saying wow yeah uh a lot of people are really gobsmacked uh that the girls are that we that that we had the girls so close together. They're two years and two years apart, which makes, uh, uh, which makes at some point three girls under four, right? So there was a year there that my youngest was born and my, uh, my second was two and my third was four. So we had three under four and it, it's, it's a big handful, not just to have three, but to have them so close together because they're, they're they're all um, it's all it's very active. It's all there's a lot of ch child stuff uh, going on. But uh, it's 
it's fun to it's fun to just roll around the floor and hug them and they're <laughs> lovely little girl they love their hugs and kisses no the boys do as well i mean no i i wouldn't say that i have uninfectionate boys they, they like the hug and kiss and wrestling is something you can do daily if you throw a mattress in the middle of the room all three will jump on you and take you down three against one is easy and I did the same thing you did. They're two years apart. Well, the first one's two years, two months. But it's, it's you know, it's, it's he, he just turned 10. Uh, he'll be turning eight. And then the little one is uh, six. So I did the same thing you did. And it, I don't know if... So it is that they're just so close in age. At some point, my, my, uh, my two youngest, uh, Sam and Kanan, uh, they look like twins. At least they did when they were growing up. Now, Sam is going to be six foot six. And Kanan's only going to be six feet, so you can see now that they're different. But having kids is clearly one of the reasons why I'm still active. If I, I don't know what I was doing before kids, and I actually heard a lot of adults say crazy stuff like that, and I thought they were just, you know, you get older, you forget. <laughs> is, that what, is that with you too? Uh, do you remember what you were doing before children? No. <laughs> that's what I, that's kind of what I'm talking about. And so are you getting the same... Uh, Nachas that I'm getting from my children because it's it's it. It's my motivator. I have not another. I love my wife and I want to do for my wife, but my kids are my heart. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, the yeah, uh, I, I find it's uh, actually a better idea to have uh, the wife be a part of the heart and soul and the kids be the appendage it, it it just means that uh there's a better uh, uh marriage situation but everybody has their own thing um my, I, I love uh i love having fun with the kids it's such a joy and, and, and um, right marriage is its own thing it's, I'm, I'm going to agree yeah, with you that the, the, the part about, about having kids. No, I think you're in a I think you're in a dead zone in your house. We're now I'm now getting you like a cell phone. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you better now. You're you're ucking and ucking. But it's just, it's okay. Uh yeah, so um I I I I like what you said. Uh, I've always treated my relationships like a child itself. Every relationship I've ever had with a woman, the marriage. I've been married, you know, eight times, the last three times to the same woman. Um I, I do, man, I, but I've been, I guess I've been married so many times that the marriage isn't extra special. <laughs> it's the children that I gleaned from it, and it's all these extra new entities that I never had with any other human being on the planet. So it's being a mother and a father that is the difference because we still have to have date night, which isn't a mother and father active. That's not an active duty of mom and dad to have date night. Mom and dad are trying to raise families that have, you know, ethics and morals and and such where uh, girls and boys, <laughs> she, my, my wife is everything to me. She's the mother of my children, but I don't treat the mother of my children the same as I treat the lady I'm taking out on a date. They're, they're different people at different times. As you were saying, uh, you, depending on what you're going to write upon, depending on what what's happening in Israel, <laughs> you, you're a certain type of journalist depending on what's going on in the day. So if the kids are at the top of the list, you're, you're now a dad. And if you're, your wife's talking about uh, personal issues, then you become the lover slash friend. I'm everything with my with my wife, and I suggest, like you suggest, everyone should have everyone has different relationships. So that's not the argument. But I want to make sure you understand that I really do see, like I love the relationship I'm in. That's the motivator for this whole show as well. It's the relationship between me, my wife and I that started this, that I really wanted to make that strong and stronger in communication because I have no short-term memory. And she was saying things to me that was going in one ear and out the other. And then uh, I did this Palmcast where we had conversations about the, you know, the top 20 rules of what makes our life stronger and our relationship stronger. And we talked through them and we turned it into an online talk show. <laughs> Uh, which worked out really well uh, for me and her, but she realized that she doesn't want to be a host of, of a show about relationships. So I moved on, talking to people like yourself pertaining to our media and what we do. And my driving force is clearly family. Um, I walk into a room and I tell people I'm Jewish because I don't know what I'll do if they say something negative. I'll probably lose. I, my whole life, because I'm a tall, blue-eyed person, 
Um, I don't. If there's a look to Judaism, and I don't, I, that in its own right, if you're not Jewish, sounds like a racist bit. You look Jewish. It's very difficult to walk around what I'm doing now because if you if you are Jewish, you can say certain things and not come. Around. If I could call you you people, and you know I don't mean you people, in such a fashion. There's a sensitivity, wouldn't you agree? Um, uh, to being only 15, one of 15 million on a planet. Every time we talk, we represent more than just ourselves. I find. Uh, I I do not know what you just asked me. I'm asking, I'm asking as a as a person of faith. Do you find it's difficult? As you are now a journalist, so you you must feel that you represent more than just your own opinion when you speak. You have a following of people who are on the same vein as you, so at least it gives you that kind of strength. Or are you uh, outrageous in your writing and you have a view that most people don't see and you're now opening their eyes? Uh, there, are, there, are two, there are two ways through, through which I, I can communicate. And the first one is I can, uh, I can gather the information and editorialize And share my conclusions. I think I'm learning my lesson with the Skype thing. That it, should, it should be a it should be a landline, <laughs> not a landline a specifically, but a a, a strong. Uh, I mean, you're on Wi-Fi, correct? Other uh, simply dates back from. Uh, am I on Wi-Fi now? Okay. Well, because we're having, as I said, I, I, I missed the last, whatever you were saying just then was coming in and out, not even with words, just sounds. I mean, no. you'll, you'll hear it back. I, I, I don't sure. edit. I don't edit when I put this online. So those who are trying to learn, I, I at this point, I, if, I, if, any, if I learned anything today, when I'm asking people to do oh. call-in, it has to be from a, from a, a plug-in of some form. I mean, I think you're the first person I did this with on, on their phone, like actually on their cell. You're using your cell phone as a data device, right? That's how this is working. And my phone's not strong enough to pull it off. I, I would say I don't have a good cell phone connection yeah. <laughs> at all in general. So uh, I, I, don't, I just don't want to miss it. But I do want to hear what you had to say pertaining. So if you can just settle down for a second and find that sweet spot that you talked to my son in. <laughs> if it's a spot scenario okay. in your home, I, uh, I'm also a walker uh, when I when I chit chat. But today I'm I'm in a stand and I'm talking to you like I'm in a studio because I'm live from my bedroom. But I'm not on location. You are. And again, uh, I would like to know, uh, representing yourself in POV. You said there's two ways to see it or to deliver a story. One is uh, gathering the information, and the other is. Sir, gathering the information, and the second part was that was the part I missed. David, David, are you frozen? Because I can see you there. One is gathering all the information and me presenting my opinion. Yeah, right, I do have my. No, can you hear me now? Yeah, can, can you, you I, hear me? I I can hear you. Can wow, you hear we are me? we are a lousy commercial for cell phones. Adam Powell. Yeah, I am Adam Powell. You're Dave Gordon, and and welcome to my bedroom. This, that's how I welcome everyone to my bedroom. Welcome to my bedroom. This is how, it, and also it's the level of intimacy. I'm willing to say or do anything. So yes, yeah, so it's gathering it, and then the the second one is your opinion. Is that right? You have you have two forms of writing that you you're, you're strong with. Yep. Okay, and when you're writing about being Jewish, you find that there's people that are on uh, your agenda. Yeah, I mean, I was just saying that. A lot of people who share my opinion, some people who don't. Uh, I, I really do enjoy hearing from people who uh, differ from me. I, it, I learn from that too. So it's a learning process for yourself. Though this whole thing, I, I mean, being a journalist, it, there is a part of being cathartic. There is a, uh, is working things out for yourself. Is that part of your writing? Yeah, that, that's certainly part of it. it. It's a learning experience, and uh, I help others learn about the topic too. 
Okay. Well, I, I, I now know a little bit more about journalism and where you come from, your POV. Um, we haven't really uh, set the line in. Um, I'm, a, I'm not really too sure what I want to say. I, I'm, I'm not a Zionist per se. That's for sure. I mean, everyone has the right to exist. So in that vein, you become a, Z- a Zionist pretty quickly with saying that pe- everyone has the right to exist. Because <laughs> if you don't have that, it changes you up. But in general, um, I have a lot of problems here in Canada, so I'm not too sure why to focus my energy in the, somewhere that's so far away where I could do more work here at home. I mean, this this is, in my world, this is my Jerusalem. This is everywhere from all over the place coming to one and trying to find peace. Don't sh- I, I love Canada. I'm a big fan of Canada because I think we're trying. Would you, would you agree? I mean, you're in Canada. I mean, you could be anywhere on the planet. As a Canadian, you could take your passport, get up and go. You chose Canada? Dave, did you choose Canada? Did I lose you? I can see you. Did I lose you? Can you hear me? Well, you nod your head if you can hear me, because I can see you still. I can't hear you. Interesting. And I could be. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can we're you doing hear it all... me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, sadly. We're doing okay. Yes. Yeah, sadly, I can hear you. You were singing. <laughs> you're, you're. You're. I mean, yeah, I, I I've heard I've heard cousins, and then I've heard uh, chuzzers. <laughs> so. And I've heard cousins. Yeah, they're they're all different, and they all sing differently. Uh, right. I, yeah, I'm basically a reverse jazz singer. Uh, I'm I'm an entertainer who wants to be a cantor. I'm an entertainer that wants to be a dictator. Did you say a dictator? It's wine. <laughs> oh man, I can tell you next time we do this, David. <laughs> I got. I got to either be in the same room as you, or I, we got to hook you up to a laptop. That's all I can say. Uh, uh, you are coming in and out like a cell phone conversation. And now, when I listen to the radio, I understand how you deal with having a conversation. That I've asked four questions, and I'm not too sure I got your answers because I'm trying to de- have you define your own Judaism. I'm a reformed Jewish person. I, 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 I every woman I've ever uh, married uh, had adopt the faith of Judaism. Uh, collectively just through conversation. I asked them if they believed in Jesus Christ being the actual Son of God. They say no. I say you're basically Jewish. I don't know what to tell you. If you, There's there's only a couple of defining moments as a religion if you want to believe that there is a, a Hashem or a Lord. Uh, you only have so many uh, ways of uh, having that take place so you can join a group. And if you don't believe Jesus Christ is the actual Son of God, you are not really allowed to be a Christian in any division. There isn't really one for you. But as a Jew, you can live in Israel, and is there a God? Eh, that's conversation. So I really like that uh, as, a, as, a, as a person of faith or a person who's looking for stuff in life. Uh, so I am, uh, in definition, I want to have traditions that I do because I know why I'm doing them. I'm not a, uh, an Orthodox person where I'm doing them just because they were done millions of years ago or thousands of years ago. I, I do them because I'm bringing it into my life. Um, have you ever been to Israel? Have you visited the land of holes? I'm going to keep trying to see if you can talk once in a while. Uh, did I lose you? Bonjour. I have. I've been there about a half. I've, I've been to Israel about a half a dozen times. Hello, can you hear me? Again, half a dozen times you've been doobie to Israel. Dooby doo. Yeah, do be done. <laughs> So yeah, that's so correct. yeah so yeah so you traveled uh, from the north did you see all of it from a lot all the way to the uh, the ruler at the top uh, the Golan Heights uh, um, yeah actually you mentioned it I've seen the Golan I've seen a lot I've seen uh, Jerusalem and a few places in between right and how long did you go for every for the half dozens of times how many how many days weeks months years did you stay every time you went. Oh, uh, usually it was uh, between one and two weeks a stint. Right. So I went there for six months. And it was in the fourth month where the people of Israel asked me, we need to know if you're staying or going because it's hard to keep up the charade. Did you hear me? (laughs) 
They told me a joke. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, they they told. I, I was listening. Yeah, okay. They they've, they've to, uh, they told me a joke. Basically, it's uh, did you did you hear about the guy who died and went to heaven? And when he gets there, uh, everyone's uh, you know drinking tea and there's he's standing he's they're standing in mud or or, or fecal matter and they're and it's it's kind of pleasant. There's nice music and uh, you know it's not the worst thing ever. And so then he he gets back to his real life and then he dies fifty years later and then he goes back uh, to. Uh, to hell there and it's fire and brimstone and finally he walks up to Satan and says I was here before I had a near death experience it wasn't anything like this he says yeah but then you were just a tourist okay I don't know if you're getting the joke if you're... <laughs> uh, but that, that seemed to have been what happened uh, Israel is its own it's its own political uh, it's, it's volatile it has its its own problems. I, I was doing stand-up philosophy and entertaining when I was there, so I had a voice. If I had the same voice when I went to Dubai, they would probably imprison me. You know, you can't go to Jerusalem and say things like, I, I like the homeless, because without the homeless in Jerusalem, I wouldn't be able to navigate. So just past the, the three ha panhandlers and the guy missing his teeth make a right, because they own their spots, the panhandlers of Jerusalem. Uh, there's a lot of homeless, there's a lot of uh, problems, and when you get to Israel, you don't expect certain things, and I was overwhelmed by a lot of them. On Fr the first Friday night, I was in Tel Aviv, um, and I asked for the uh, special. I said, "What well, you know, I, I, I'm a traveling person, so I find myself getting places and asking for the specials, and they, he brought me, uh, I said, well, that's delicious uh, on Shabbat. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's a flaked ham sandwich. And I, I said, we're in Israel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but the specialty of this house, because it was a, a an African Tunisian place there, is that uh, <laughs> flaked ham. So I, 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 what I love about my life is that I get to see what other people aren't seeing. I'm living my life not as a tourist, but I'm walking the path as uh, someone who lives there. Uh, so I, I had fun in Israel. I, I, I would go back, but I, I was, I was uh, afraid. Uh, in Israel, it's the only place you pick people up that have a gun. If a person doesn't have a gun, you don't pick them up in your car. Person has a gun, you let them in your car. Person doesn't have a gun, you can't come in my car. <laughs> you also can't have a cab. You can't be in a cab. Have you ever tried to hail a cab and own the cab? The cab driver picks up 12 other people. It's, dude, I just rented the cab. Yes, but we're all going to the same place. You know, so what, 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 what? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I know, it's fantastic. I I felt I belonged, even though I have no I have I didn't have much in common with these people other than, you know, six hundred and thirteen possible laws. Like it was that was all that was binding me to these people. They were all brothers in arms. Everyone I met was a soldier. Anybody over the age of thirteen was a soldier, and they had something. They all had terrifying stories to tell me about their friends and family being exploded, and. I don't know what to say when people tell you that. I don't know if there's a proper response, but I'm talking to the um, the people who I met were the stand up beasts. Uh, in here in Canada, we call them stand ups. Uh, a person does stand up comedy. There, they call it stand up beast. I'm a stand up beast, and they were always delving into these questions and these ideas that were just. I mean, I tell you, man, uh, who are the funniest people in the world? Jews. So don't you think the funniest Jews in the world would be in Israel? <laughs> like, okay. I'll agree. Why not? I'm not gonna. I'm not here to argue. <laughs> I'm here to see what you want me to see. But I planned on getting onto a motorcycle and driving to Nepal. And the people of Israel told me you're a Jew in the Middle East. You are not going to Nepal from here. They will kill you. And that was my. And I said I kind of understand that. You know, I'm a Canadian. I live next door to uh, 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 Quebec. So I kind of get that, but we're not as uh, volatile <laughs> as these people in Israel. So I really delved in. I mean. I want to go back. Any way I see, I say you should go and support and visit Israel uh, just so you can see it because my mind is open because they're just regular people trying to live. It's like people, exactly what happened in Ottawa is what's happening in Israel. It's, there's no difference. That is what's happening. So that same feeling that they're just, there's somebody who doesn't want you, thinks they can take you off the planet. I'm the sanctioned human being that says that can't be. And uh, I actually, I believe you as a journalist, uh, had a conversation. You were you were brought onto the air to discuss that. Is that true? The Ottawa story. 
What about the Ottawa story? You took that Ottawa story. You you ran with that Ottawa story that happened. You 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 were interviewed yourself as a journalist uh, in Canada pertaining to. That's correct. That's correct. I was on a New York City uh, radio station the mor uh, the morning after the attack, and the Americans wanted to know from Canadians what happened in Canada, and uh, they were they were mortified. Right, and did I didn't hear your interview? Did you spin it any way or any fashion to the Israeli parable? No, no, okay, because at the time they were they were qualifying that it was a, it was a, a Islam or a Muslim, and that was the uh, at the time. I, I I don't even think it was real. They were just adding that to the story. They didn't know for sure, but that was clearly part of the story. After it happened, they were very quick to tell me that the person was Muslim. Yeah, there was some discussion about that uh, percolating, and, and I um, put that in as, as an aside. It was believed that he was, uh, the attacker uh, uh, was a convert to uh, to Islam. Uh, but um, I, um, I, at that point, I think a lot of people were still trying to gather information about him. Okay, see, so that has nothing to do with Israel. And so that's, that's just news. They reached out to you as a news person, as a... Uh, the, hold, I, I want to ask, like, did you reach out to them or did they reach out to you? The reason I'm asking is for how did how does one get the gig? <laughs> uh, they came to me. Okay. Well, that's so that's important. So you're out there for 20 years now putting your stuff out there and the books are one step towards the, the, the articles and now you're constantly online as well uh, through your website? That's right, landmarkreport.com. You can see my articles and my podcasts. All right. and, and, and a few and a few video casts as well. And video casts as well. Well, I would like to thank you. My children would like to thank you, and the, the Kohims would like to thank you. <laughs> if you don't know that reference, it's later. Uh, and again, uh, you you uh, you definitely opened my mind to other uh, other ideas of what my children can do as as a job, because this is part of the entertainment industry. Sadly, uh, media is entertainment, and the news, it's how it's spun, and that is part of the gig. So I thank you for being so honest and forthright. I'm sorry that uh, we lost you in connection. Uh, I, might, I don't normally edit these things. They go straight off the way it is. So for those who listen through this, this cast, I thank you for muttering through. I will, I'm learning at every corner, and uh, the next one will be better. So thank you for your time, Dave, and uh, I hope to see you and get good things towards you. And uh, Again, that was live from my bedroom on location. I'd like to thank you all, and good night. Thanks.